Hey everybody, welcome back, or if you're new, welcome. And make sure and hit that like and subscribe so you don't miss any more of the future fun. So today I will be keeping with the princess theme of today's uh, their Grim Reaper, or ah, Grim Brothers fairy tale reading of Rapunzel. Now, I would have a few more for you, but I haven't quite finished my new Christopher Moore or my Mulan Twisted Tale story. But don't worry, I still have a good one for you today. Because it's Kingdom of Beauty by Deborah White. And if you can't tell by the name, it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Note, you know, Belle back here behind me is one of my favorite princesses. And I know I've done a couple of you know, her retellings before, because apparently, she, you know, she's not just one of my favorites. She's very popular. I haven't found many of, you know, Ariel or Mulan or Merida, so if you find any, let me know. But today's, it was another really fun one that is very much not at all like the Disney movies we grew up on. We star a character named Felicity, who, you know, in her time, there's dragons, which already puts the bar pretty high up there and very different. And yeah, we've got this, start off with this dragon, you know, flying, looking for new land and a new colony. And apparently dragons are not just mystical, they're very magical. And he finds this new land, but yeah, can't tell where the magic is coming from and he can't communicate with his old colony because he's too far away. He's flown over a vast ocean and lands in a field. Oh, surprisingly only kind of scaring f our character Felicity, who is our Belle in this, you know, version. And you know, she, in her land, they know about dragons, but she lives in a small village far away from where they normally live. So she doesn't really get to see them except for as an occasional you know, way overhead, fly by. But this dragon is young, new, awesome, and stops to chat with her, even though he's not very impressed once he realizes that she's not magical. But, eh, still, she's nice enough they get along, and remember this dragon, he will be back. But she's also, you know, she meets him, she's on her way to the market looking for shoes for her very absent-minded father and ends up buying this beautiful trinket that is supposedly an artifact, meaning it's, you know, ancient, magical, and supposedly helps whoever has it find what they're looking for and be found, which is somehow they can't figure out what this is. Like, yeah, you know, there's a twist later that it's fun, but I kind of figured it out immediately. <laughs> and they didn't figure it out till the end, because, well, it wouldn't be a very good book if they went, oh, yeah, hey, common sense, here's your solution. We know what to do. It'd be over in five pages. So she gets this little trinket and tells her dad she, when she gets back home that she didn't find him any shoes and has to deal with the village prick who is friends with her brother and... You know, you'd think it'd be nice to have the wealthy guy in town having a you know obsession with you, but no, he's one of those of, well, I'm better off than you, so you should be flattered and obsessed with me. Honey, you're chasing a redhead. She ain't impressed. You gonna have to step your game up other than mommy and daddy have money and we're still stuck in a small village, so obviously you ain't that well off. And... You know, everybody just keeps telling her, be nice to this prick. He's got money. He'll marry you. And they don't understand that the guy does not respect boundaries at all. He's like, I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm going to put my hands on you. Deal with it. So, yeah, she finally gets rid of him. And daddy and brother go off to the market. And only brother returns. And, of course, he shows up when, you know, town prick is there hitting on her again with the story that, you know, dad vanished into this, you know, castle that's been missing for a few years. 
and you know, I was chicken, I didn't go in after him, I barely escaped with my life, and well, hey, you keep trying to impress me, loan me a horse, I'm gonna go get my dad since he won't, and you're too stuck up, but let's be real, you're too much of a scaredy cat to go with me and help me rescue my father. And here's where we get the Beauty and the Beast thing of, you know, she shows up to this castle that has supposedly been missing for two years, you know, finds it no problem with, hmm, guess what? She gave the trinket to her dad in place of shoes. You know, the trinket that helps you find what you're looking for and be found. And daddy has been imprisoned by a big scary beast for trying to steal a rose. Hmm, familiar? And of course, you know, like, what the heck? I'm, it's just a freaking flower. What the hell are you throwing him in the dungeon for? Fine, I'll take his place, send him home, and Daddy freaks out that, you know, you can't stay, but once they throw him outside the gates, he hauls it and nobody comes looking for her for months. And of course, all the servants are, oh, there's a girl here. And they, like, the prince is fine, I won't leave you in the dungeons, but you're going to be my new servant. And, you know, the one that runs the castle, because let's be real, Beast doesn't run the castle. His head, you know, matronly servant runs everything. He just thinks he does until she gets on his butt, as only, you know, grandma can do. And he's like, no, 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 honey, you're not helping around the house. We're going to go put you up in the nicest little suite and get you all done up. And they kind of force them to have dinner together. And one of the little servants is about her age. And they're pretty much immediate giggly best friends. And it's kind of cute watching Viola just fawn over Felicity. And gosh, I always wanted to be, you know, a lady's maid. And we're going to turn you into a lady. And I'm going to get to be your maid. And, you know, kind of have a crush on the guard. That he is completely oblivious but everybody else can see it. And so they get her done up, force her into dinner with them every night. And, you know, slowly, of course, you know, she gives him crap and he's not used to being disobeyed. He's a prince. And his servants mostly do what they're told because there's a whopping 18 of them. His fiance and everybody else went, oh crap, and hauled it out of there. As soon as, you know, he started transforming from the curse and, you know, they left soon enough that they could get out. Whereas the servants, they weren't cursed in the traditional sense. They're just not allowed to leave the property. Like, they just, they, nothing can get out except for the prince and he suffers severe agony and his roses start dying if he tries to leave. And, yeah, eventually she goes and wanders and goes and checks out this magical rose garden, the only thing that's still blooming in the middle of winter, and he freaks out, yells at her, because, well, he thinks she's going to destroy the garden and doom him to beastly eternity, and she has no idea why he's being, you know, what he is, and yelling at her, so she goes hauling off, and he uses the magic mirror to see that she's in danger, rescues her, and, of course... Once he's gone and, you know, put himself through hell to save her, they kind of bond over that. And we see the, you know, of course, the romance that is needed to fix the curse starting to blossom after, like, four months of this. And, of course, they give each other a lot of crap throughout it because he's found her weak point. She loves picking at him because, you don't mess with the redhead. She ain't impressed by, you know, beastly royalty and lets him know it. So even once they start getting along, they still keep... Sometimes it's friendly banter, sometimes somebody crosses the line. But, yeah, they kind of start getting along. And people start showing up to this castle that has been missing. But only some people can get in, some can't. And they only see her. Yeah, the, the Felicity, who has the magic trinket, but she forgot about it. So she's just, you know, she gave it to her dad, took his clothes that had it in them, and, you know, completely forgot. And it, that's the first time it gets mentioned, is, 
oh, yeah. We don't know why they can see him and she's having fun playing his translator to these guests that think she's completely insane, translating for obviously nobody because they can't see him. So she's either the evil enchantress that cursed everyone or a crazy lady pretending to be a fancy lady. Or so almost everybody believes, including the evil village prick that finds her and goes, you're coming back with me. You you know, pretended to be better than me for long enough. You're village trash, but you're hot. You're coming back and I'm going to own you. You know, put you in your place. And tries to drag her, in which case Prince Justin decides, yeah, he can't see me, but I can still whoop his butt. And, you know, teaches him a lesson and sends this hero running off like the, you know, coward that he is. And then lying to the village that, I'm a hero, I killed this guy, but I was too late to save her. Worship me. And that all gets destroyed when she comes back to town very much alive, looking for her brother and father who, you know, fled. And we kind of, we find out why they're in this little nothing village and why they tore off, but it's, Later on, I will let you read and discover that there is quite a twisted history here that apparently, you know, they, you know, her father knows about, but she didn't really know. And some of the other high up royalty vaguely recognize her and like people go, she looks familiar, but they're not sure who she is. Yeah. And of course, she, you know, denies it because... She has no idea. So that creates some complications that are fun to figure out. And of course, the implications mess with our prince's head and he goes back to being, I knew she was a lying prick. Everybody that's not me is terrible. She's just trying to use me. She's evil. But this wouldn't be Beauty and the Beast if he didn't learn a hard lesson and end up falling in love and breaking the curse anyway. But... Yeah, what's fun about it is a lot of people kind of get their, re yeah, what's coming to them, including the town prick. And yeah, she just keeps giving crap and we get to see the dragon again. And there's kind of, there's talk of, you know, basically the dragons and the humans usually leave each other alone because there used to be this big war, in which case the dragons could obviously slaughter humanity if they wanted to. But they're mostly nice, but so that there's no potential fallout if coming across the wrong ones, they stay out of each other's business. And the only reason that the humans could possibly do anything is because the dragons kind of leak magid, uh, magic, essentially, and kind of accidentally created these magical beings that have been passing it down through their bloodline on occasion. And certain kingdoms have outlawed magic. Like, nope, you're not allowed to use it. If we find out you can, you're getting killed. And there's they're trying to push for that to happen in Felicity's kingdom, especially since the king, or well, the king's dead, but the prince has been cursed clearly by magic. And there's somebody's he gets to kind of watch his uncle take care of things and doesn't like how that's going. And doesn't like how his council is acting. And council who even brought in some magic testers to go, oh yeah. Yeah, he's crazy. He can't be trusted. He's using magic and he's bad. All trying to displace him and push their own agenda. So we get a little kind of political, but it's basically magic and, you know, typical power play family backstabbing. But overall, it's... You know, if you like fairy tales, if you like Beauty and the Beast, if you like a, you know, especially, a, it's more kind of like the modern version of Beauty and the Beast where she is a lot feistier. And, you know, she kind of had some spine to her in the 90s version, but she's gotten a lot more sassy now and this takes it up a whole nother notch. But there's also dragons and more magic, so... It is, it's a very fun retelling. You are not going to recognize a lot of it just because you know the standard story. So 
if you're into that, check it out. Later, I will be reading Rapunzel for y'all, and I will be back later with some more good books. Hope you enjoy this one. Have a great weekend, everybody. Happy reading.